Watson, hello there. My name is Carolina Alves and I'm doing an apprenticeship as a laboratory technician in Switzerland. I'm currently in my last year and preparing for final exams. The apprenticeship lasts three years and includes the practical training in the company and the theoretical teachings in professional school. During the apprenticeship, I am trained in analytical and preparative tasks of the profession in various departments. I am currently in the research and development, so I basically get to do new experiments, protocol them and analyze different chemical compounds. The thing I love most about my job is the diversity for sure. I can do a lot of different chemical experiments and it never gets boring. For the most time I work individually, but I always have a team by my side that are there for me when I need it the most. Today I'm going to show you guys a small part of my work. We are going to analyze this mysterious compound with the help of this small piece. It's called the TLC plate, which also means thin layered chromography plate. TLC can be used to monitor the progress of a reaction, identify the components of a given mixture, or determine the purity of a substance. TLC is based on separation by adsorption type. It's a very quick and easy way to identify substances. For example, if you want to know which components in the color purple they are, you can simply chroma separate them by chromatographing it with water and paper. There is always a stationary phase and a mobile phase. The mobile phase flows through the stationary phase and transports the components of the mixture. Sounds kind of difficult, right? But believe me, it isn't. So let's do a TLC right now. This is the stationary phase which is this white layer made of silica gel. It also contains a um, substance that fluoresces in UFO light. Then there is the mobile phase, which is this suitable solvent or a mixture of solvents that must not react with our samples. Then I draw a line near the bottom of the plate, like this. Then I cur uh, correctly label my sample and my product so I don't get them mixed up. If any of this would be done in ink, the dye from the ink would also move as the chromatogram develops and it would make our analysis more complicated. With a capillary, a small drop of the chemical mixture is placed on the plate. Like this. It should look like this here. When the spot of the mixture is dry, it is placed into the covered beaker with the solvent. Like this. You have to be careful. Oops. Can you see it? like this. It is important that the solvent is below the mark like the line with the spots on it. And the reason for covering the beaker is to make sure that the atmosphere in here is saturated with the solvent vapor. To ensure this, the beaker is often lined with some filter paper soaked in solvent Saturating the atmosphere inside the beaker prevents the evaporation of the solvent as it rises up the plate. As the solvent slowly rises up the plate, the different components of the chemical mixture move at different speeds. That results into the separation of our chemical mixture. As you can see, it's moving right now. So, after it's done, it should look like this. As you can see, these spots look exactly like our product. So that means that our product is a mixture of both of these samples. Each spot has a retention factor. So now I just have to measure the distance from the starting line 
to the solvent front. Then we divide this value from the first point by this total solvent distance. So the retention factor is always below the value one. That was a brief insight into my professional everyday life. I hope you guys enjoyed it and thanks for watching and learning what a day in the life of a laboratory technician looks like. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And always remember to stay curious. Goodbye and auf Wiedersehen!